and let us all that we can to build a better future. And apparently a lot of the issues that we've been having with the supply chain have been rail-based, freight, freight rail uh, um, problems. I know there was a problem with one line. They actually halted service between California and Chicago because they were trying to un unsnarl the supply chain. Now, what it comes back to with all this is not just poor logistics, but the fact that uh, 33 per that these railroads have, compl have slashed their workers by 33% in six years because they want to maximize shareholder revenue. Hedge funds, the sh you know, Wall Street, and this is exactly what I've been talking about on this show, say with things like, oh, uh, BlackRock and Blackstone, these companies that are investing in rental housing. Again, these are organizations that are not particularly concerned even with property management or real estate development. They're concerned with providing dividends to their shareholders and to their investors. Um, this, it, this is happening very consistently. We've, we've reported on this show in the past of what happens when you're not, we're not even talking corporations, who are people, of course, uh, but we're actually talking about you know, superseding the corporations are the investor groups that are coming in who have no connection to the industry at all. We've already seen what's happened with Tribune Publishing. Um, that one of the things that happened is after it was taken over by a hedge fund, after most of their journal journalists took uh, took you know their packages and left. We were told immediately that there was going to be ma major slashes in news until they began to rebuild the play, rebuild our, our newsrooms. And we're already seeing, like the Chicago Tribune here in Chicago, a once proud newspaper that's been reduced to listicles. Oh, because God, that's the only that's happened. the only content that they're getting. Uh, and again, there's some good folks still there. There's Louisa Chu, there is Chris Jones, there are some good folks there who are doing their best. But this is, uh, this is madness, and uh, this is the logical extension of trying to, everybody's trying to get their little sliver of the pie, and when you have that kind of a dominant mentality, you even see the industries being, industries themselves, capitalist industries themselves, being co-opted by hedge funds, and at some point, uh, they're going to cut, 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 and cut. The bottom is going to fall out. It's going to be disastrous. But here, you know, what's going on with, with, the, uh, with, with the supply chains here is not just about having problems with the containers or ships blocking the Suez Canal and taking their sweet time and getting them out. This is, there's something far more insidious going on here when you have nobody with the industry or the mission or the expertise in mind. All they care about is getting whatever profit they can before they themselves get out and leaving a, a ruins. You know what yeah. the biggest bubble in America is right now? The very concept, the very idea of we need to make 3% more in 90 days. That can only last for so long. Apple can only, Apple's worth what, $4 trillion now as a company or something ridiculous something like of that, that nature? Something. Uh, How, actually, would you kindly yeah. look up the worth of Apple? What's 3%? That's like, what? That, that's increasing value of like 40 billion, like Bill Gates' like old net worth, or even more than that. If, I mean, maybe like, that's like Jeff Bezos' net worth for, let's see, two point. Oh, oh. Uh, let's see, hold on. Apple's net worth at the end of the fiscal year of 2020 was $65.34 billion. Oh, but, that's, but their uh, valuation is $2 trillion. Oh, wow. Ooh. Two point two oh trillion. Eight. So they have to make three percent of two trillion every ninety days, and Dang it's like on. first, first they make a. And as the older America from years ago, first they make just a good product that people buy, and they're not even shareholder based; they're stakeholder based, and that changed, of course. Then it's so how do we make prof How do we keep that ninety percent growing? Well, let's just offshore everything. That won't have any ramifications like creating China as a superpower, as an example, or destroying the middle class of America, as another example. I know. Let's pay workers absolutely nothing and never raise their wages and spend a lot of money, but less money, on getting everything in news to say, no, that's fine. That's how we should be doing it. Those stupid, lazy workers aren't doing a thing. Let's take away benefits. Let's take away 401ks. Eventually... There's nothing left to strip out, and you're cutting a third of your workforce so that you can 
make that money, but you sort of need that third of a workforce to make that money. These, this is going to happen, and we already saw when the pandemic happened that it was like, you know, with a lot of companies, like two weeks of like having slightly less than normal income destroyed them because they didn't have anything in stock. Well, and, and we think about when I'm, when I'm, talk, when I'm calling the, the great housing scoop. You're going to have these, com these companies coming in, buying up all these houses because they have the purchasing power to do so. And over time, they're not going to manage them properly. That's what happens when you don't manage property correctly. Well, it degrades. The systems degrade, the, 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 the frames, the building, the foundation, the yards, the neighborhoods themselves degrade. Meanwhile, they've gotten out of there and they're leaving blight yeah. in neighborhoods, um, devalued properties at this point, disgruntled neighbors and community members. And again, who's going to suffer for it? Well, it's not going to be the hedge fund managers. Well, for now. For now. For Eventually, now, well, they, and oh, by the way, uh, I don't think anybody, any of these folks are watching this show, but I'll say this. Every once in a while, you'll read a story about how the 1%, or should I even say the 1.1% uh, or something like that, the 0.1%, are planning to ride out climate change by, say, oh, moving to New Zealand, living in a compound guarded by former Navy SEALs. All right? That can work for a couple of months, but guess what? Former Navy SEALs are usually in pretty good physical condition, and many of them are able to turn around 180 degrees. That's a that's a fair point. I mean, I've seen I've seen Navy SEALs turn around. Kid, have you, you, you seen Navy SEALs turn around? You know, around? one thing I want to just say about those uh, top one percenters that think they can hide. Let me give you an educational story about what happened to the highborn during the French Revolution. Oh, oh, wait, there's another one. There was a great Soviet photo that took place with the Romanovs. It was a wonderful Soviet photo that happened during that revolution too. You can't hide. You can't hide forever. People are going to want to find out what's going on. And just, uh, you, you think you're safe. All those who think they can escape, trust me on it. You won't hide forever. The point is this. If you, you know, you fine. You go ahead and you hire Navy SEALs. At some point, the they Navy snap. SEALs begin to realize that the good stuff's in here, and we're the ones with the guns. Hmm. It, it's very... 